Woo, let me tell you about Southern Holler. Deep-rooted conversation on civics and business. It offers an insightful exploration of local politics, community dynamics, and business partnerships. Each episode unravels a complex interplay between civic affairs and business ventures. Man, power. We made it. We did. We did. Now, we almost didn't make it. We almost didn't make it. We almost didn't make it because, you know, everybody was talking about we're going to have a Surratt Red Dawn moment. I was ready. I was ready. I I was going to full-on Patrick Swayze rock and roll. (laughs) I was ready. So did did you go buy your uh, water, bread, milk, eggs, butter? Oh, yeah, a little powdered food, too, to keep uh, just in case. Right, for French toast. AT&T. Yep. I tell you, get the self together. Hmm. <laughs> no. Well, that, that's one way to start an episode. That is a one way, and people are going to be thinking, well, I wonder how that relates to the topic at hand. But you know what? We can we can tie anything, just about anything. Yeah. But, but, uh, well, I mean, so we work in businesses, absolutely. and it's civics-related. So w- what would our gov- local governments do? Absolutely. What's more civics has to do with civics than defense? There you go. There you go. Yeah, potholes. Education, defense, that makes sense. And enemy troops coming from the sky. Mm. That, that's all right. What a that, time. <laughs> well, it's good that we do live in the Southern Holler because we, uh, we have a certain defense line that, <laughs> that I assume most of us have some sort of home defense. Oh, yeah. That, I'm sure they would make, make it a mistake coming down here to the South. It would be a hard time for them mm. if they did. That would uh, be a stupid decision probably. But, hey, you know what? We made it into the studio, which is good. Yeah. And it's great to be here at the Northeast Studio. We got to this point, and it's going to be a great time. I'm looking forward to it. I think we've got a lot to talk about when it comes to the different subjects at hand, civics, business, government, all types of things. And I'm looking forward to it, and I, I wouldn't want to do it with anybody else but you, my friend. That's right. So, I again, I, I feel the same way with, with you, Power. Uh, just the knowledge between uh, your education and, and the things that you like to study and uh, things that you like to experience. And, of course, as a city councilman of a local city you and your vast experience of don't, a couple don't weeks cuss me like in, that now don't cuss a, me like in a couple months in your vast experience no i i'm just i'm <laughs> I, I'm, I can't wait till we get to discuss some uh, some more detailed episodes down the road of just kind of the things that we learn and experience and and honestly so much of our content comes from just conversations with people um, absolutely we we live in a society that we're always online we're always on social media one of the things I think that we we overlook about local civics is we talk at a national level, international level, both in business and politics. Absolutely. But we forget the local people, you I, know, the, the people we shop with. Absolutely. Go to baseball games with, fill absolutely. up our gas at the same places, buy the coffee from the same places. Absolutely. Those groups of people and us, we live here. Absolutely. You know, I was actually having this conversation today about uh, local government and civics, you know. But I think a lot of people, what a lot of people don't realize is local government, your city council, your county commission, your board of aldermen, if you have a board of aldermen, whatever that local government may be for you, that is your closest form of government. That are, Those are the people that you can talk to in the next hour, two hours. You know, you have several different forms of government as far as representation goes. You have your state senate, your state house, your U.S. Congress or U.S. House, U.S. Senate, is something different about your, your city council, county commission, board of aldermen. They are the closest form that you have to you. They're your neighbors. They're your fellow churchgoers. Like you said, you shop at the same grocery store. You go to the same coffee place. You do all that in the same community. And that's why it's important, because the decisions that we make on our city council and Winder and the decisions that other councils make and board of commissioners make, they affect you more directly mm, yeah. than decisions made by the U.S. House, U.S. Senate, right. um, by even even the Georgia House and the Georgia Senate, even though, I mean, a lot of what they do affects us very quickly and, and directly. But your, your local cities and counties, the ordinances that they craft and put into place, decisions that they make, the budgets that they craft, they all directly affect you quicker and and they make a, a bigger impact. And so I, I'm here. I'm glad to be here to kind of spread that awareness because I want people to know how much of an impact that makes and how vitally important that is to you as citizens as well as for business owners. too. Right. I mean, and that's and I, and you have a lot of insight in that. And as a business owner and you are going to I'm excited to hear from you and to 
talk with you and have these conversations with you because the insight that you're going to give is I, I'm I'm really excited to to have those discussions with you and I think it's going to prove to be very beneficial. I appreciate that. Let's give a little bit of background. I work for a small business. The last 20 years has been in the small business arena. We've done everything from well, the current name of the company I work for is Chubby Hippo Science. It's a startup. I'm just like uh, every other American that want to chase the sense of freedom of owning their business. My background is graphics, designs, all the way up to architectural lighted signs. There are several projects in the area on Barrow County and Winder, greater area that I'm working on a lot of sign projects. How I've started to know how to talk about business is the permits that we have to pull, watching how the area is growing and changing the things that affect the way we design signs for the area. We have to pay attention to, we have to fill out the permits, we have to do engineer drawings, A to B to C to D to go through the whole process so we get permits that are safe for all of our signs before we go and install them. It does form a great partnership. Also, my wife actually works for a public library. Most of my life is in the public space, in governance, in libraries, and, and things like that. What do you do now, right now, Power? I'll tell you a little bit about myself. My name's Power. I tell people it's like Georgia Power. Kind of a weird name. It's very easy because I can go into a store and not get confused. You know, there are a lot of Johns in the world, but not a lot of Powers, and so that makes it real easy in the pharmacy. But my name's Power Evans, and I uh, live in Winder, great little city of Winder. Worked for a place called SK Battery America in Commerce, Georgia, now for almost two years, and I handle their government affairs. But I took the deep dive, and I ran for office. Uh, last year started in I believe July and then uh, election was held in November I won my election I don't know if that I tell people when they give me congratulations I say it's either congratulations or condolences whichever you feel that fits better but I took office soon after that because it was a special election I've always loved government politics is kind of in my bread and butter I tell people all the time you know some folks enjoy sitting down watching good football game Uh, if the NFL if it's football season or if it's baseball season whatever that's their time to relax you know how I relax is I turn on C-SPAN and watch a Senate committee, oh, Lord. and and that is that is well, my that is my entertainment, and it just gets the blood going. You know, can, can you I, think a field goal is exciting when a chairman and a member of that committee gets into it. That really gets the blood pump, pumping. Let me just tell you. Can Can I comment on that? Yeah, that's amazing. Thank I, you. I I, that. That's that's just a different mind for a different person. <laughs> well, I tell people, I'm, you know, I'm physically 24, mentally 84. So, mm. you know, it helps. Uh, <laughs> so when you start slipping, I should just say something yeah, or just, just let punch, you go? Yeah, just punch me when you when okay. you, <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. When you think I'm just trailing off and mumbling, you just let me know. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I interrupt your story. <laughs> no, ahead. you didn't interrupt. No, no, no. I've always, I say that to say that, you know, government is my love. I love politics and I love government. I, weigh, I love the way government works, even though it's weird to probably hear people say because a lot of people hate how government works and it can be tough sometimes because you want things to move along quicker than they can. And I struggle with that because there's a lot of folks that need help in my ward when it comes to infrastructure repair. And you want to be able to say, hey, tomorrow we're going to go out there and get it done and fix it real quick. But in reality, you know, you have to you have to wait. You have to get the you got to find the money because as somebody that is every day have to be aware that it is not my money. It is the taxpayers' money. It is the people that pay their taxes to the city every year. We have to be mindful of that, and I'm very mindful of that. So when I try to evaluate capital projects moving forward, if it's putting sidewalks down or curbs down to help folks with water flooding their front yards when it rains heavily, whatever it may be, I have to keep in mind, I got to make sure that that money's being well spent. That's not a quick venture. It takes time. And, and, and so that's the tough part about government is it, it's a very slow moving machine that is huge. And I know folks have a, the, not the best opinion because you'll see that a lot of things are ranked higher in popularity than forms of our government, but it can be really good sometimes. And there's moments where you can, the small moments when you can do a lot to help. Looking at government, so we're, we're going to, I'm a little bit nerd on this too as well. Mm-hmm. I, I grew up on AM radio, national and regional and local content providers when they used to listen to the radio. Now everything's through an app or stream or absolutely and downloads. Just learning it like that in conversations. I really like ideas. I like big mm-hmm. conversations. Absolutely. And then going from 10,000 foot view to, well, how can we do this in step one? So let's cover, since you went to college for this, let's yes, cover great. step one. Let's, let's, real quick, what university was that, Jeremy? 
Oh, uh, what, as a Gators fan, uh, what what's the best university in the world? Uh, is that, that Good Dog? Uh, Florida, go get it. No, I'm thinking you're. I feel like you're not realizing that the two time national championships, the University of Georgia Bulldogs, that may be the best university in the world. That, that's okay. Not to uh, uh, just like not po- to. just like politics, I could spin it. The Florida Gators are still a better win uh, and a better team. That's that's okay. I'm okay with that. Ooh. See, I know who's going to get all the fans in this. <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh, I'm going to get hate mail just, off the first episode. Absolutely. Thanks, Power. Hey, I, you know what? Always looking out for me. Hey, I just got to, you know, I got a rep from a team, baby. I got a rep from a team. That's all right. I still <laughs> won't back down. Thank you. I appreciate that. Glory, glory, old George. Mm. Okay, moving on. <laughs> so let's let's go back a little bit. Last year, mm-hmm. 2023, I ran for office as well. Yep. And that was a an experience. <laughs> Honestly, I wish more people would dip their toe in it and say, I'm going to run for something. Because you do get forced into new ideas, a way to figure out how to have large discussions that do matter on a local level. Honestly, we need more good people to run for office. The first detractor that I found when I said, uh, I'm going to run for city council in the city of Auburn, I got told by people of the clergy that I was going to become a socialist just by running and being part of the government. That's a real story. I'll use real names offline. (laughs) I was going to become a socialist and, and things like that. I had several people stop me. In the grocery store, we started off talking about grocery stores and being in public. <laughs> no, we're talking about social. <laughs> Coffee shops and gas stations. Mm-hmm. And always, I'm always up for good conversations. When we talk about local things, it's not the same. I think learning civics and the best way to talk about big subjects locally, so much of this takes time. Honestly, I think it's also missing what's already in the books already. There are sunshine laws. There are civic laws. Mm-hmm. There's, there's a are, lot of ethics. A there's lot a, of ethics there's a lot of ethics that we aren't taught in a publication education or on social media because it's always the next hook, mm-hmm. the next the next big conspiracy theory. Mm-hmm. Kind of like our phones going down today, <laughs> coming after us. Red Dawn, I was ready. I was, I was ready. I was I was prepared. Now I didn't have a phone <laughs> to tell me I need to be prepared, but I was still prepared. I think just having those conversations that it's going to be okay and that we just need to rediscover some basic civics and that we need to find the good people. Honestly, sometimes turn off social media when you do run for office. You'll mm-hmm. sleep better at night. Having the right people, educators, small business, big business, you know, just people that just want to have great conversations Absolutely. about what's going on around Absolutely. us. Yeah, I agree. You know, there is a lot of stress running for office because you want to make the right decisions. And, and what I mean by the right decisions is the right decision to me is a decision that doesn't make everybody happy. I've heard this, you know, if I can make you happy 50% of the time, I'm doing my job. Because if I'm making you happy 100% of the time, then I'm not doing my job. I'm telling you stuff that you want to hear. I had to work on that and make sure that what the reality was. And so I had a lot of great conversations with folks, folks that had not met until I ran for office. And, and those conversations were were really good, really insightful, and they helped me a lot, and they still continue to help. I agree. I think I always tell people, if you meet the requirements, if you meet the age requirement, if you meet, you know, whatever those requirements may be, run for office. You have that you have that right as an American citizen to run for office. Give it a shot and, and see what it's like because you learn a whole lot. I learned a whole lot. I learned a whole lot, and I, and I had made the decision that, you know, matter if I won or lost, I— uh, appreciated and I, I loved all the information that I learned from my time. I'm grateful for that experience. I won, of course, but I, I enjoyed that experience. So let's cover one thing specific about signing your life away and saying <laughs> that you'll stick to ethics and report all the funding. But there's oh. one document that you do have to sign yes. on a local, local level that you do not declare and run on a specific party. Oh, yes. So, so, Mo- so let me back up one point to that. Most of the conversations when I introduced myself, and when they didn't know who I was or know through my wife or the things that we do through the week, the first thing we talked about, well, how do you vote? Well, you know, I, I just responded, I vote yearly. We don't talk parties. At this level, it is not useful to start a conversation being on the opposite sides. That, that's how you affect local change. Mm-hmm. When you run for municipal government, it is 
all nonpartisan. That's how it's set up. We ran nonpartisan, and that was one thing you came across is, you know, what are you, are you running as Republican or Democrat? And you tell them, well, I'm not running as neither because this is a this is a municipal style of government. It's nonpartisan. You don't choose a party. You don't run under a banner. And it surprised a lot of people. It was, wow, you know, we thought it was all one side or the other. In this regard, you get to have a lot of conversations across the field with both Republicans and Democrats. You know, uh, you get to have conversations with both sides and to, you find out, which is interesting, you find out that, you know, no matter which party you are, which really which ideology you are, right. everyone has the same problem. Yes. And that's, and that's how I, I would, it would take 15, 20 minutes just to unwind and change the language. It's like, okay, so what are we really talking? So we're they're talking about local education. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. We're talking about street safety, Absolutely. crime, Respon- economic response times for response emergency services. Yeah. Oh, that's that's that supersedes mm-hmm. so many things. Absolutely. How does your city want to bring in businesses? Small, medium, large, mm-hmm. extra large, industrial. Absolutely. Those are the discussions that we should be having. Absolutely. And those are the ones. Those are the formats that make what our great state of Georgia is like. And I think we need to keep developing that. And sometimes we just have to ignore the larger conversation just to have an everyday conversation. Absolutely. You know, that when I talk to folks, everything that you talked about, that was the topic of concern. You know, whether it was huge developments that are popping up or making sure that, you know, that the, even something like your trash service, making sure that your oh, trash Lord. is being picked up on time, uh, discussions about whether or not to have recycling. Speaking of know, hate mail. That's, that's item <laughs> number get, two. I you may might, get that. I may get that. that you might, a, that's a hot topic in the city. Yeah, is, yeah. Is that's, recycling and that's trash. That's a hot pickup. button one too. My grandmother was getting on me the other day. I I, I joked with her. I said I was joking with her about her um, the amount she pays a month for trash service, and she just ribbed on me the whole time about it. Each of those concerns are all important because you don't. It's equal to me because you don't want trash piling up on your on the corner of your road, just like you want to make sure that if you're calling 911 that for us, because we have our own fire department, making sure that the Wine Police Department, Wine Fire Department's, you know, getting there on time, which shout out, we have, personally for my city, we have an awesome fire department and awesome police department. We've got a great chief of police and a great chief of fire department. Awesome folks. And we got just a great group of officers and firefighters. Just amazing group. And they are quick. They are efficient. And, and I just love those guys so much. And, and, and that's another thing I'll tell you that's been, been great is getting to know on the government side, being on council, is getting to meet everyone that works for the city of mm-hmm. Winder. I have a workforce development. And so a lot of times I think about, you know, how can we prepare the workforce? And in a society now, we have a lot of folks retiring. And so, you know, that goes from everything, private and public service, whether it's a private corporation or a... Could I, could I give a one shout out yeah, absolutely. to the workforce yeah. development since we're in the Great Empower Center? Yes, absolutely. For workforce development, for absolutely. what you're talking about. That's great, isn't it? I, hey, no better shout out. That's right. Anyway, Mr. Workforce no, Development, I, go I, ahead. That's I great. agree with it. Hey, this is a great place, the Empower Center. We work with them all the time at SK, and they're just amazing folks. And, and shouting out again, the Northeast Studio, Northeast Georgia Business Radio X, great folks. I got away from what I was saying about services. If you can help people, no matter how small the battle, if you can do a lot for those small battles, then I feel like you're doing a great service. And I, I'm, doing, I'm trying to do that myself. You and I were asked to go speak to a Boy Scout. Yes. Club. When you talk serv- civics, old school, Boy Scout oh, yeah. and Girl Scouts, oh, yeah. is Girl Scout cookie season. Support Oof, your local they... Girl Scout. We actually talked to those guys, those young men. Do you remember what you what you said about service and civic? Oh, you mean the quote? Yeah, that was a quote. That was a good quote. So, I actually almost wrote it down. That there's a There's a quote that I heard, and I had to remember it off the top of my head. But I always forget where that quote comes from, but it always stuck with me when I heard it. And it talks about service. You know, service means nothing without love and compassion in your heart. Yes. And without those two things, then everything that you do, hate to sound harsh, but it means nothing. Yes. You have to have that love for your community. Yes. You have to have the love to go out every day and work and fight for them. And you have to have the compassion to to deal with people and to work with people. Yeah. Because those two things are vital, not, not only to 
to government, but to business. Yeah, and I'll I'll talk about business yeah, for a yeah. second. So some of the largest successful companies, and we'll talk region and locally, are the ones that figured out how to express concern and wanting to help absolutely, and want to problem solve a client's needs. So I in my industry, so I work in science and graphics and things like that. So I get to walk in people's imaginations, and I hear... Shout out. He did my campaign signs, and they were fantastic. Awesome. So just amazing work. I couldn't have been happier. Did an amazing job. I appreciate that. Absolutely. So, so much I get to deal with is the first interest or the first thought about what people want to do and how they want to express themselves. And you really do have to have that service mindset. And you do really have to care. Once you see what that person is doing, then you can help guide and help them decide on the products they need and how they want to represent themselves. It's funny how it crosses over into civics so quickly Mm -hmm. because you're going from single person, person to person, and then from business, and then you get back to the civic side Mm -hmm. where every day you feel not always happy, happy, helpful phone calls. Sometimes a little bit grumpy, grandma grandma and trash issues. To, yeah. to, you know, every once in a while, you do get to have fun. And that's where the compassion comes in because everybody that calls me with a complaint or, or, or has an issue that they need help on, every issue is important to me, every right. issue that comes before me, you know, no matter what it is, and try to help them as much as I can. And if I, if I can, I tell them honestly, you know, I'm sorry, I, I wasn't able to, to do anything. and But the times that I can help, I, I, I really try to... No matter if I can help or not, I try to put all my effort into to doing what I can for that person. And for somebody that is in government, you've got to have, you've got to be able to, somebody wanting to go into government, you've got to be able to take the time and fill those issues and fill those calls, put the time in to help sort those issues out. And that's what I mean, and that's what I think it means by the compassion part, is having that compassion, understand where they're coming from, and being able to take the time with them. Because that's what I try to do. I always try to take the time with them and work my tail off to try and help them as much as I can. And I agree with that. That's that's awesome. It's so good. Let's talk about the next couple episodes. Absolutely. We haven't really written a script because we like to have natural conversations. Absolutely. It's a lot better, too. You know, because like, like we talked about, you know, I, I think we could talk the, the horns off of Billy Goat and be pretty good, you know. One of the things we do want to move further down the line, we do want to have some specialists Absolutely. and people in with us. Absolutely. That will break up the monotony of us. Monotony. I like that. That's a nice word. That was a special like word that for word. today. I'm glad you said that. That's our word of the day. Yeah. That's my uh, some education working for us. I like that. <laughs> we do want to have specialists come in, some economic mm-hmm. specialists, maybe some civic-minded specialists. Absolutely. Elected and, officials. Yeah, elected oh, yeah. officials. If we're so fortunate to have some department heads from local cities and, and things like that. Honestly, are in the grind every day. And let me let me get a shout out to those guys. It's every city, I mean, all the local governance. Mm-hmm. The show is the politicians because we talk a lot, they talk a lot. Absolutely. I get, get tired that. of hearing it. That's right. So let me give a shout out to the people that actually do the grind every day. Absolutely. They're, they're not politicians. Absolutely. They show up during COVID, kept the water on. Assisting water drainage. Absolutely. Uh, we had storms during COVID, so Absolutely. clearing roads and things like that. Absolutely. So I just want to give a shout out to those guys. And the folks that work on holidays, too, that oh, have yeah. to stay away from the families. That's correct. I mean, we had, you know, for our city, the times that it got really cold, especially last year before uh-huh. I came into office, when yeah. it was it was like 9 and 12 degrees, yeah. we had everybody, fire, police, public works, everybody, our communications team working After 5 o'clock, fielding calls, dealing with folks that were having problems with pipes bursting because it was so cold. They do an amazing job, and that happens everywhere. Happens everywhere. By the way, one of the other shout-outs for the the people that do the business of city and work for city, they don't have sometimes their job they don't know how to prepare for. It's like, remember when we had a hurricane through here a couple years ago? How do you you prepare for a hurricane and northeast atlanta georgia and then minor flooding and then sometimes snow every once in a, a while. tree falling and on ice. the road oh yeah <laughs> uh covid and all those things anyway i shout out to all the people that actually do this every day for a living those guys are special i would always say they're usually underpaid but they do it for love and for compassion i think this segment might be just for a shout out for those so thank you for the time for for just listening to us Absolutely. just to get to just to get started and always you can always find our podcast in this series on negabrx.com 
and you can support us on all your other favorite podcasting iHeartRadio, spotify but come to the website first check us out southern holler Woo!